Os voy a poner, pasar a presentar nuestra siguiente mesa redonda, la última del día de hoy, en la que vamos a hablar de la internacionalización de las startups españolas. La mayoría de las pymes en España quiere, quieren crecer más allá de nuestras fronteras, es lo normal. Así lo afirma el estudio sobre la internacionalización de la empresa española realizado por la Cámara de Comercio el año pasado. Más del 70% de las startups de base tecnológica creen que facturarán más en el exterior que dentro de España y dentro de tres años o en los próximos tres años. Ahora bien, ¿qué piedras se encuentran en el camino las pymes para internacionalizarse? Que no hay que internacionalizarse. ¿Es su pequeña dimensión corporativa? ¿Es la financiación? ¿Es la selección de un socio en el mercado de destino? ¿O son los aspectos regulatorios los que más pesan? Y otra pregunta, ¿la internacionalización es para todos? Pues bien, estas y otras cuestiones se van a tratar en la mesa que hemos preparado a continuación. Como siempre, tenemos un moderador, en este caso, moderadora de excepción. Ella es la directora de financiación y relaciones con inversores de Invest in Spain del ICEX, María Jesús Fernández. María Jesús, es que está cerrada la puerta y no se oye. María Jesús, me encanta, nadie me escucha. María Jesús, María Jesús Fernández, que ya te presento. No, tú no, María Jesús Fernández. A ver, vamos a poner orden. Esta, no, vosotros no, momento, momento. Aquí. Ya, ya que estáis aquí, no, no os vayáis, no os vayáis. Esta, esto ya se, han debido tomarse algo. No os falléis porque ya he presentado a María Jesús Fernández como nuestra moderada y ha dicho tu cargo, tu título y, tu, y todos tus secretos. Muy bien, y ahora sí que entre la mesa de María Jesús, venga, ala, ellos son Laura González <risa> Estefani, Estefani, está eh, Wendy Waterbolt, que no sé si lo pronuncio, ahora lo presenta, y no Jackie Abit Ball. ¿Sí? Ay, señor, okay. con lo de los premios nos hemos emocionado. A ver, María Jesús, ¿estás bien ahí? ¿Prefieres estar en el centro? Ponte al lado de Wendy, mejor. Y así, uno a cada lado, y así, Very ¿vale? Good. So we can make a flag Perfect. with the, with the so we're gonna talk colors. in English. Oh, sorry, I forgot to say, oh, I'm so that's, sorry. That's so fine. sorry. With all these changes and, sorry, this is gonna be in English, you all have the uh, app. Sorry about that. Todos hablan y entienden español, but Wendy, you know, she rather, although, you know, sorry about that, Wendy, she's from Cardiff. If you invite me next year, I'll do it in Spanish. <laughs> okay. No worry, no worry. Uh, sorry about that. Maria that's Jesus, fine. all yours. Well, thank you so much. Hi, everybody. Um, I, I know we're it's late in the evening, but I, I want to thank you for joining us in this panel discussion that is going to touch upon, I think, a very interesting issue, and is uh, the extent to which the Spanish startups are attracting international investors against the background of uh, a very, very good year for the venture capital industry. Uh, at the global level and uh, particularly in Spain. We have three remarkable speakers. All of them have uh, a highly geographically diversified portfolio with uh, nice investment opportunities uh, in Spain or Spanish startups. So uh, they all have already shown uh, a very nice excitement of what they are seeing happening uh, in our country, in our startups. So it would be fantastic to learn more uh, from them on what are the key drivers of this uh, interest and what is the, the funding source uh, for, uh, or yeah, the, the funding source for, for finding those uh, uh, nice investments, uh, you know, it's networks, it's founders, and how do they, see things going going forward. So I'm going to start with a, a round of self-presentations. Uh, uh, well, I'm Maria Jesus Fernandez. I'm the Director of Finance and Investors Relations at IFEX. I don't know if you are well acquainted with this institution. Very briefly, we uh, try to support the Spanish companies in their internationalization process, and we also work to attract foreign direct investment. And with that, very briefly, I'm going to turn it to Jackie and, you know, yes. tell us a little bit on yourself. Okay. Thank you, Maria Jesus. Um, my name is Jackie. Um, I work for Cathay Innovation, which is a European uh, fund based out of uh, Paris, but we invest in, uh, in China, uh, Europe, and the US. It's a 300 million uh, euros fund, and we typically invest in uh, B rounds, so tickets from uh, 5 to, I would say, 15 million uh, per company. Um, and what we've done in, in, in Spain, so we've been active for the past year, so we are investors in Glovo in uh, OnTrack and in, uh, in Coverfy. So the three companies that we are currently invested in, investors in, uh, in Spain. Uh, and as for myself, uh, before, before joining uh, Cafe, 
I spent four years at Orange as a corporate fund, uh, and uh, the Orange publishes uh, fund. I'm originally from Madrid, uh, although I have a French accent when I speak in English. <laughs> and um, and uh, I mean, uh, if you're interested to, I mean, to look for investment uh, and to explore, I mean, how we can help in the development of the companies in Europe, US or China, I mean, uh, welcome to come after the session to discuss with me. Perfect. So, Wendy, your turn. Um, so my name is Wendy. Um, I'm in charge of the startup investments at uh, BNP Paribas Cardiff, which is um, one of the largest personal insurers, and we have a very strong expertise in uh, uh, payment protection, so CPIs, or whenever you take a mortgage, insuring that, uh, and diversifying in PNC. Um, we are present in 35 countries uh, with a very strong presence in LATAM because it's almost half of our business. This is why actually Spain is a very interesting uh, place for us because a lot of in Spanish startup end up going to LATAM, so it's, you know, it's a good way for us to uh, um, build further synergies. Um, and so Actually, Cathay is our partner because we invest together through a dedicated uh, early stage fund, which is called Scene Entrepreneur, which aims to um, do uh, investments which have uh, an open innovation uh, objective. So we only invest in companies in which uh, we, we can build win-win partnerships uh, and, and, and bring all the benefits of you know, working with a corporate uh, with the expertise of you know, great VCs such as, uh, uh, such as Cafe. And as for me, my prior uh, experience, I, I, I'm more from the VC uh, side. I used to work in a, in a French VC, early stage VC in Paris and working mainly uh, on marketplaces um, and, yeah, mainly marketplaces and uh, platform businesses. Okay, thank you. Laura, your turn. So, um, I'm Laura. I'm originally from Madrid, although I've been living in the U.S. for the past nine years. Um, I'm a general partner of um, a Silicon Valley-based fund called The Venture City. We invest uh, one-third in the U.S., one-third in Latin America, and one-third in Europe, um, of the portfolio companies we have, you may have heard about Spot at Home or Cabify, One Fertility, and so many others. We, we do like companies that are in seed stages, Series A and Series B, so we are very diversified and very geographic, and we have over 40% in FinTech and InterTech. We do a lot of marketplaces and then consumer services, and I'm very glad to be here today. So thank you, Laura, and, and for you guys, make sure that uh, tonight uh, during dinner or cocktail, you talk to these guys. So don't, don't miss uh, the opportunity to talk to them. So uh, I'd like to start off uh, the uh, conversation by asking our speakers to share their views on how they are seeing the uh, venture capital investment shaping up this year. Uh, last year was a remarkable year for uh, the VC industry. Uh, as I said, at the global level in Europe and particularly in Spain, in fact, one of the key features of the Spanish startup ecosystem is the increasing number of national and international investors increasingly interested in what they are seeing happening in Spain and inputted their money to work in Spain. More than 850 million euros uh, invested last year, which for us is record numbers. The fundraising is uh, growing healthy. Uh, the number of companies that have been able to close funding rounds of more than 10 million, million are uh, tripling. And we have already very nice success stories and uh, we see uh, one billion worth of exits already. So very good news for uh, what is happening here. So, but uh, profiting that we have uh, such a nice international investors, I'd like to uh, ask you, uh, Jackie, you're uh, investing extensively in Europe, in China, in the US. Uh, how do you see moving, things moving in the uh, VC uh, space? Um, yeah, we'll stop moving. Uh, I mean, China, I think it's completely different uh, for a lot of reasons. Uh, first of all, because of the scale. So if you look at the, the space, um, I would say I will first focus on what's happening in Spain slash Europe, and then maybe talk about the other two uh, main regions where we invest and also what's happening there. So w when, when, you re when you look at, uh, at Europe and what, ha what has happened over the past, I would say, five, uh, five to seven years, maybe uh, more relevant in the past years in, in Spain, is 
mean, re really the, uh, I mean the, um, the establishment of kind of ecosystem where you have, I mean, money, uh, when you have uh, entrepreneurs, okay, and when you have education. So money is very important to, I mean, to be poured into the ecosystem and to fund, I mean, entrepreneurs. But, but, but before, before a few years from now, I mean, for a, a young, uh, I would say, a student or somebody graduated, uh, I mean, uh, his ambition was really to join, I mean, a big company, okay? Thank you. Maybe, yeah, maybe, can we yeah, check I'm his, uh, where do you have the... Uh, yeah, yeah, move it to the side there, there, maybe it's that. Let's, let's see, otherwise okay. we'll, okay? Okay, thank you. Um, so this is, um, uh, if you look at, and um, when we talk about global... In case, okay? Okay. So when we talk about global, I think it's a very good example. So Oscar, the founder, he is 26, okay? And, uh, I mean, he graduated from the U.S. in, uh, in uh, engineering, and he went uh, straight to a, a big corporate. I mean, he worked for Airbus. And after six, six months, I mean, he realized that was too, sm uh, too slow to move, and so he decided uh, to fund the company. So, w I mean, that could have been the case uh, a few years uh, ago, but, you know, to fund the company, you really need, I mean, the, the money. So today, the government, institutions, etc., are really helping the, the creation of that ecosystem. And this is something that we have, we've seen over the past years happening in Europe. I mean, maybe, uh, maybe Northern Europe coming to France, which is experiencing like a tremendous boom over the past uh, two years. And uh, from our perspective, when we look into the Spanish market, we are really seeing that happening. So we, we have I mean, great companies, but without, I mean, that ecosystem, the notion of, you know, even the creation of companies would not have been uh, possible. When we look into the other, the other regions, I mean, uh, China was considered to be uh, mainly a, a copycat, I mean, a country. And uh, I mean, but that is not the case anymore. So made in China is not, uh, you know, it does not represent a cheap product, but it represents a high quality uh, product. Uh, and then you add the scale of the market with more than uh, 1.6 billion, I mean, uh, inhabitants, more than 1 billion users of WeChat, which has really completely uh, reshaped payment uh, in, in China, communication and, and, and so forth. And the companies where we, that uh, we invested in, in China usually, I mean, they don't look to go outside the Chinese market because the, the market is, is big enough uh, for them to scale. Um, and, uh, and when we look into the U.S., I mean, U.S. have been, they've been there for, for years now. Uh, and, and, and I think that uh, if we look into industries, so I would say that U.S. It may, it was mainly a deep technology companies, but with China being more consumer-oriented uh, um, uh, companies, but now we're seeing AI, self-driving uh, uh, technologies, and so forth. And our, our, our position really gives us the, the ability to look into the three uh, regions and to compare when we make an investment uh, according to, I mean, the potential, of course, of, uh, of the companies. So just to, to finalize about this, uh, I mean, uh, overview, I think it's a very great time. I mean, honestly, I think uh, worldwide, I mean, to, to start a company, to, to find the right, the right funding. And of course, uh, because the consumption has changed massively with the mobile, I mean, smartphone and so forth. Uh, and we are seeing that. Uh, so for the entrepreneurs in the, in, the, in, the, in the room, so, I mean, if you have a great idea, I mean, don't, don't feel, uh, you know, scared to, I mean, to, to, really to build something because I think you have the right, the right, uh, Again, I'm, I'm, I'm really using the word of uh, ecosystems, so to support, uh, to support the ideas. Um, um, you uh, have, uh, uh, Jackie, uh, uh, give us a, a broad overview of these three markets, and I, I wanted to uh, uh, elaborate a little bit uh, more on the US, because, uh, uh, Laura, you are uh, based in the US, you know the market very well. I don't know if, if, if it's right the impression that maybe we are now at a moment where UVCs go uh, for bigger tickets. So it's going later stage. And so we have uh, less deals, more money, less deals. So how does that trend affect these guys here? Yes. So. Um I'd like first to explain a little bit about the U.S. market. Sure. Uh, so you have the, the, the well-known or mature hubs such as uh, Silicon Valley, New York, and then you have all these new emerging cities that are Austin, then you have Chicago for Insurtech, Miami, which, by the way, Miami is for the second time 
the first uh, city in entrepreneurship in the U.S. Wow. under the Kaufman Index, which is the index that measures entrepreneurship in the U.S. So this is why I moved from Silicon Valley to Miami. But anyway, so what you can see is that there's a lot of angel networks more than ever. I think that that's very interesting because for the seed stages or the very, very early in the past, it was way harder for the entrepreneurs to find that first ticket, small ticket, convertible note from someone they knew. So there's more and more very well organized kind of like angel networks. On the other side, you have these huge funds that are, you know, uh, of course, there's some in, in Asia, like in the invasion funds and that stuff, but also in the U.S., how these big ones have even more and more money. Um, I think there's a special opportunity, uh, we are a 100 million fund, I think there's a special opportunity for people like us, where the average ticket is around 1.5. We may not be doing more than 30 investments in total, but I think it's a very interesting moment because if you see the quality of the entrepreneurs, uh, the opportunity, because most of the entrepreneurs in the U.S. don't know how to internationalize their company. So a lot of the times when we, when I talk to entrepreneurs here in Europe or even in Spain, and they say, no, because you guys, you help us internationalize. When I go to the U.S., it's the same thing. They don't know what are the different levers they need to take to go to Mexico, to Brazil, to Europe, or when you go into Latin America, it's the same thing. So at the end, entrepreneurs are facing the same issues in the U.S. because it is a little bit more mature. The, the risk tolerance is higher if I compare to what I see in Spain, but in terms of talent, Spain is amazing. And I think that this is why more and more all kinds of funds from all over the world are looking into the Peninsula Iberica, because there's a lot in Portugal as well, uh, because with very few resources, they're able to build amazing things. So sin complejos, that's right. my message to the entrepreneurs. Think big, yeah. you can get it there. And uh, there are already a lot of very interesting international funds coming to Spain to meet all these amazing entrepreneurs. So I think that the moment is sweet. And this is coming from someone that launched my startup back in 1999 and I crashed big time with the bubble. Yeah. So I've been there in the hard times. So I think that now if you have a very well-built product, if you are very much oriented into data and you have a very good uh, product market fit, there's a lot of funds that are willing. There's more variety looking into invest in the country. Great. And now, Wendy, uh, corporate ventures funds entering into the game. How, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, you're uh, going uh, in that niche of uh, more seed, a series. How do you see trends going on and, and a little bit of why corporates are now, you know, entering widely into the game? So the corporates are, you know, in a way helping and in another way, um, you know, kind of uh, um, increasing a trend which is there's a lot of money on the market. And we see it have an impact on the early stage much more than, I guess, on the later stage, because you know, it's all a, uh, of, it's, it's a circle, it's an ecosystem, as, as Jackie put it. There's a lot of money on the market. Uh, um, governments are pushing uh, 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 startup creations. The, the mindset is, is completely changes, uh, changing. The, the role models are, are changing. In France, you know, five years ago, uh, People would never dreamed uh, of g uh, starting a company. Now it's it's becoming sexy to start to start a company, and the result of that is that there's a huge number of uh, early stage startups, and they have a lot of money in front of, of them. So it's becoming difficult to first be on the good deals and find the good ones, and and so uh, from my perspective and you know from what I've done in my previous uh, fund and also what I see now, when you look at the um, early stage and lower tech companies, it's a bit difficult to you know, find the good ones and find the ones who are down to earth because at the end of the day, it's, you know, basic, in French we say, uh, bon sens paysan, meaning it's basic business. And a lot of them are kind of, you know, getting a bit crazy with the ability to raise money very easily and not getting back to the fundamentals of the business. And so <clears throat> at the early stage, it's, for me, it, it, it's a bit difficult to, you know, uh, 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 
find the good ones and, 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 and see the ones that really will make a difference. And we go back to, you know, what's interesting about, for me about the Spanish system is really the ability to uh, do frugal innovation because they, they can do much more with much less. It's crazy. And, and especially, you know, if you look at fields like uh, marketplaces or platforms, at the end of the day, it's all about operational uh, excellence. And so, really, it, 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 it really takes uh, 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 the, the knowledge of the market and the market fit. And, and, and sometimes all this money in the market kind of tends to you know, push the entrepreneurs to, I'm not saying take a big head, but you know, not see the, the real things about the, the market. And I, and I have, have a huge respect about entrepreneurs, but that's what we see at the early stage. And then at the later stage, you see the ones that succeeded. So, you know, and I'm not saying it's easier, but you can see the ones that really manage to pass uh, that, that, that gap. Um, more on the insurtech field, uh, which is, uh, I guess, more linked to, to, uh, to, to my industry. It's very interesting because we've seen uh, a lot of companies starting more on the uh, uh, B2C distribution uh, approach, wanting to go really f uh, front with the insurers and saying, you know, there's a lot of things to do with insurance. The experience is awful uh, uh, and, and we can change it. Uh, and the corporate VCs, invested a lot at this moment, saying, okay, uh, I'm missing something, so I'm going to, to invest massively. Sometimes not looking into models and not you know, saying to entrepreneurs, okay, basically, how are you going to do this? Because we've been on the market for a long time. How are you going to manage acquisition? Because it's the basic, most basic thing when you go B2, uh, B2C on insurance. And, and, and so they invested massively. Now we can see that they're a bit coming down and companies are trying to see how they can bring added value deeper in the value chain. And then allowing us to think more about collaborations with the startups rather than really facing them uh, as a potential competitor. Uh, so this is actually really interesting to, 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 to see that move where startups are thinking, okay, how can I do embedded insurance? How can I integrate in the value chain rather than uh, uh, trying to be the next lemonade, but you know, lemonade spends a lot of money in acquisition and it's, it, and it's a play that's not, you know, there won't be that many lemonades. So, so at the end of the day, it's very interesting to see, to, to, to see that uh, change. Right, uh, very interesting. Uh, Wendy, I want to uh, pick up on one of the points you said that uh, now is uh, um, getting more and more difficult to find it, the, the good projects. There are so many things very good going on everywhere and to to pick the right mm. one is, is uh, uh, getting uh, difficult. So I'm going to change a little bit the, uh, the order of questions uh, that I had prepared because I, I'm interested to see what is your uh, primary source for finding good projects? Is it founders? Is it uh, networks? And let me uh, focus uh, in Spain because uh, when, when you look at the Spanish ecosystem and you th three of you have mentioned it, uh, one of the uh, key features is uh, the uh, rapid pace at which it has been able to grow and mature over the last few years. And I venture to say that now is one of the most vibrant in the European Union. And I think that that has been possible thanks to the strong combination of outstanding talent that you mentioned, highly skilled, and at very competitive prices now, and uh, a lot of money coming in. So you have that um, nice ecosystem that is uh, propitious to the activity, but how do you decide, both three of you, to go cross-border? And what is the source of, you know, for funding it? Jackie. Um, so one of the things that we have in our fund, I mean, beside the footprint in, in three regions, uh, so obviously, I mean, cross-border is, is the DNA of, of CAFE, is uh, uh, we have several corporate LPs. Uh, I mean, BNP is one of them, but we have Valeo, we have uh, Michelin, uh, we have Total, uh, we have, I mean, big corporates, and, and uh, they're looking for innovation. They're looking for innovation, uh, not only to invest in, but also to source for their uh, own internal needs. So what we do, okay, so we, we, we map, uh, I'm sorry, I'm really bad with the mic, uh, we, 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 map, we map certain sectors, and by mapping, what we do is we identify, I mean, companies. So let's say, uh, if we talk about uh, uh, transportation, 
Okay? For instance, we have several I mean, corporates that are interested in that space. So what we did, so we look into, again, across uh, three geographies, what are the relevant companies in that field. And what we did is really meet, I mean, most of them, not all of them, of course, but meet the relevant one, or at least the one that we believe were relevant. So we went to China, we went to the US, we went into Europe, and then, of course, we not only are exploring the space, but we are also meeting the entrepreneurs, knowing what they're doing, and seeing not only about uh, I mean, the nature of the business, okay, which is the essence of the, of, you know, of the vertical of the space, but how if that entrepreneur with that company has the right I mean, management, uh, has the right the business model, etc., to scale. And this is where I mean, we, we invest in, in, in the company. So I will just take a good example, and also it's referring to one, uh, one of the Spanish companies we, are, we invested in. And I think I'm really proud about not only the exercise that we did, but also because the company is from Spain, is uh, in the transportation logistic uh, space. So we look at the space, uh, so I'm talking about on track. And when, uh, what happened is that when we started looking into the space, it was just because we were looking into French companies, uh, you know, that were, were, they were raising money. Uh, so, and then we say, okay, we, we, like, we like the space, but we didn't feel really comfortable about the companies that we, we, we met. And again, I don't want to say anything bad about those companies, but of course we explored the competition and this is how we identified uh, on track. So we, I mean, we really knocked on the door and say, okay, you know, we're a fund from Paris, etc. We like what, 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 you, what you're doing. At that time, they just closed a round. That was, uh, uh, it was a year ago that they closed around in May, in May 2017. And they say, okay, no, no, but it's okay. We don't need, uh, we don't need money. They say, no, no, but... And then, and then comes, I mean, really the role of selling what, you, what is the value you can bring to the, to the company. And Inigo was, I mean, receptive, really, really like uh, the, 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 the guy who said, okay, you know, we, we can start talking, but not about uh, fundraise. So we, we, we built the relationship. And what happened is that we had the conviction, not only about the space, but that was a relevant company to invest in. And that was in July. So we said, okay, maybe we're going to miss the other company, uh, companies in the space, because we have no, absolutely no, uh, I mean, certainty that we will get into that company. But we said, okay, I'd rather fund the company that I feel this is the right one, that just fund a company which is in the, in the, in the right space. Uh, and at the end, I mean, uh, lucky, luckily, and I'm really, uh, you know, proud of that, we built and we, we built, I mean, a good relationship. And, uh, and finally, I mean, we, uh, we invested a few months ago. Uh, and I think that that is uh, one of the approach that, w w that, we, uh, that we do. Uh, to look into the companies, and again, and again, talking about your question, referring to the cross-border, we really believe that in that space, it's a more regional play, and we feel that uh, Antrac has the potential to become the global European leader in that space. Thank you, and uh, you know, going on uh, to Laura, maybe based on, a, on an example that yes. you could elaborate on? Yes, so we are very much a data Spanish piece. example. So we are very much data freaks. Um, so the way we filter companies is because the founders understand that because of our backgrounds, we really want to deep dive into the numbers of the company numbers, not meaning revenues only, but also meaning the growth metrics, retention, users, etc., cohorts and stuff like that. So when we look at that, which is kind of like the heartbeat of the company and we see, whoa, these guys are growing organically. For example, Spota Home, which has been our latest investment um, a few months back. Um, you know, and you see that the DNA of the company, the founder, the team, plus the way it's growing, you know, when you see that data, you know, this is when you really want to be there. There's also one other thing that is very important to us, which is the, the founders network. I guess that good founders want to work or would always recommend you good founders, the same thing that nice VCs are going to be recommended by entrepreneurs to other VCs. I, I for example, have invested a lot in Spain with, with Seaja Ventures, and I met Beatriz through an American fund, you know, and uh, a couple of entrepreneurs in Silicon Valley told me about her and her work and how she was helping entrepreneurs, and I was kind of like, whoa, I want to meet this lady because the, 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 the entrepreneur network, the best entrepreneurs are telling me that she's, the, that she's one of the main players in country and she's doing uh, amazingly well. So, so with this, the, the message that I'm trying to give is that entrepreneurs, they should filter very well the VCs as well. It's not the sure. way we reach out to them, but it's also the way they reach out to us because at the end, this is a marriage and you really want to, you know, these five to 10 years um, kind of relationship, 
you want to walk it with someone that you know that when you're down, they will take you up. So that's so far the learnings that we got. And that's uh, very interesting for you guys to look at the VCs exactly because that's the marriage and I want to uh, go back to Wendy and, and the collaboration it has with Katai because how once you have identified good company, how do you plug it in in a corporate mm -hmm. to scale it up? So, because I mean that must be difficult as well, can kill it or so, so help it grow, mm. you know, so plug it in a corporate mm. kind of different thing, different approach. So How that's the, the whole idea of the partnership. Um, right. Because the, the idea was really to respect uh, our, you know, uh, core uh, material, which is a startup. So, uh, you know, the partnerships uh, uh, tries to um, make sure that there's a, a balance because Cathay is the investor, so we are not on the board, we are not on the cap table. So, so you know, they provide the independency of the startup and, and they really uh, uh, play the role of a great VC that, that they are. And for us, we only provide them with uh, uh, corporate uh, uh, business uh, opportunities and open innovation. So, you know, first of all, that's the way that we make sure that we don't crush them. The other thing is to make sure that we don't you know, wait too long until they die or we don't provide them enough business to, 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 to live. So it's also something that's, that's very important when, you, when we choose a startup is to make sure that you know, without our business, they will still, you know, it, they are still an exceptional company. Um, and actually, Cathay helps us a lot uh, doing that decision, uh, that they will live even if, if uh, we don't provide them with all our, our, of uh, uh, their business. And the other thing is, it, uh, we try to make sure that uh, um, the collaboration really comes from uh, business need. So we go, we, we, we go both ways, both, uh, both top down and bottom up. So we're trying to really identify what are the core needs of our business. And for example, um, uh, we identified that aggregators are a new trend and we will need to find a way to get closer to the end client and to be like, you know, uh, in, in the everyday life of the client, through an assistant. We saw that in, in, in the banking field with aggregators, and we saw that entering the uh, insurance field with, with aggregators. So, you know, we discussed it with, with Cathay, and we saw that in Spain, Coverify was, was raising uh, and had a, a very interesting footprint. And, you know, that's why we decided to, 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 to make the inv uh, investment. And it really comes from the business and the Teams in Spain, for example, are very happy to work with them and really to, 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 to include them uh, in, in, our, uh, in our business. Well, thank you very much. Time's up. Just one second from each of the speakers, just one second. Which is the sector that is stimulating your interest more nowadays? Just in one second. If there is one or your main source of stimulation, one second for this, the benefit of these guys. Okay, so just one sector, e-health. E-health? Yes. Wendy? Oh, you stole my answer. Self also. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's hard. Um, I want to learn about cybersecurity a lot. I think that's what we're going to be focused on in the next couple of years. Any of those sectors, guys? So you talk to them. So thank you so much. It's been very interesting. I hope you liked it. And uh, any questions uh, at dinner time, they will be available for you. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maria Jesus, and your, uh, your panelists. I have to invite you out because we have the last uh, keynote speaker of today.